Bonjour, I am Sandrine. Together, we will learn about the infinite quantum and galactic realms so we can embody more of our multidimensionality and accelerate our ascension. Bonjour, my name is Sandrine. I am a spiritual teacher, multidimensional channel and trans channel. In this transmission today, I would like to share it with you about the architecture of coming together as two souls. Some of us call in twin flames, soulmate relationship, and other names. It's basically what is already going on on an architectural level within the quantum where two souls come together. And how does that help us activate the next layer of our romantic connections in this lifetime. So at the time of recording this episode, we are just one day after Valentine's Day. So I thought that it was timely to share about this subject. So usually I share about subjects that have been embodying myself and working on myself for quite a while so I can talk about my experience. Here it is pretty different. So I've been postponing recording this episode for quite a while, even though people keep asking me these questions. What are twin flame relationship, Reese and Dream? What does it mean to be in a relationship on a romantic level with another person? What about karma and soul contract and so on? And I was always like, well, I'm not in a relationship myself, so I cannot really talk about it, right? Until, again, I received the same question, and then the answer that came on a soul level was completely different. The, the answer that came was, you can talk about the architecture of it. You don't need to, go, to talk about the embodiment of it. And to talk about the embodiment of it, you simply need to connect to two of your great friends in the quantum that you've actually been receiving transmission from for quite a while. You can simply bring them on this episode and share from their own perspective. So today on this episode, I would love to welcome Ascended Master Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ. And they will be speaking as one as I channel their infinite wisdom on what it means to be in a divine union in a, this relationship of the highest quality and standards that we can find on earth and also all the other relationships that are in between on other levels. So I would love to invite you to understand that the architecture of divine union of twin flame relationship and of soulmate relationship comes from understanding of what it means to be a projection of an oversoul network. And for this, I will show you one of my amazing graphics. So this is amazing graphic representing the oversoul network. So if you listen to this on the podcast, I will describe it and I'm sure you will understand what I'm talking about. It's really not that complicated. So an oversoul network is a very big frequency somewhere out there in the quantum. And this oversoul network has many different projections. We are one of these projections. Our oversoul network also has projections in alternate realities and sometimes even more than one on planet Earth. So when one oversoul network comes close to an oversoul network, another oversoul network, so it means that there is going to be an exchange of information. Therefore, we can, as one projection A or as one projection B, we can receive extra information. Basically, we can learn, we can grow, we can evolve. Because remember that the biggest purpose for all life frequencies, not only on Earth, but also out there in the quantum, it's always evolution. We exist because we are here to evolve, to learn, to grow, which means to collect more and more data, more and more information. Okay? So, person A and person B are coming together in an exchange. And it means that this exchange is going to last five minutes, or maybe five years, or maybe 50 years. And through this exchange, they are going to give each other keys 
So person A is going to trigger sudden reaction in person B. So person B can actually start understanding maybe what it means to feel love from person A. And therefore, person B that was really traumatized during his childhood has never really felt what love means. And therefore, person B will be like, oh, oh my God, this, this like woman or this man like sex here or identity or gender, the way we identify doesn't really has any importance. This is why I call person A and person B. Okay. So it's beyond that. It's literally, you know, love and connection between two souls. So when person A loves person B in her own way, she's going to start maybe giving person B gifts. She's going to start giving person B like compliments and she's going to want to spend time with him and so on. And he is not used to all of that. If that's going to generate a lot of reaction in him, it's going to give him the opportunity to grow, to open his heart and say, okay, so do I actually like enjoying time with this person? Do I find this person interesting, exciting, beautiful on so many levels? Am I interested to spend more time with this person? Yes, so let's go for it. I'm ready to open my heart. And this is literally the exchange of information that happens. It's like, this is an opportunity to love, to experience love. Are you ready for it? If the other person feels ready and has in him the interest of growing into that he's going to start doing it and in exchange person b is going to start giving back which means it's going to trigger subtle reaction in person a and person a will also have to process all of these data coming and saying well i'm receiving this information so i can evolve so i can also open my heart and grow so let's say for example that person a and person b are completely new souls on earth. They have never been here. I'm sharing this example precisely because then we understand the greater architecture of karma and uh, um, literally soul connections and twin flame relationship and so on. So person A and person B come together and they start exchanging information. And maybe it doesn't really go well, but they, they got married. They have kids now and they live in a world where society tells them well we've got to stay together for the children you know it's really important and so person a and person b they're not really fulfilled you know they constantly trigger each other and they don't agree on how to raise the kids they have their own wounds from their inner child um, and they they just basically they don't have such a great life but their belief system makes them believe that they must stay together to work it out and what happens is that the relationship is therefore dropping in frequency. So from the first time and the first few years where they were really happy, like challenges keep on arising and they, they don't find any ways to turn these challenges into opportunity for growth and into keeping on loving each other and wanting to stay together from the heart. They just decide to stay together because so it is. That's what society wants. That's the norm. That's what we do that's how it goes and therefore this is the start of toxic relationship there is nothing uplifting and maybe they don't they don't experience violence you know maybe it's just a very blah mediocre relationship but what it does is that it basically it maintains them into this density so the information that they start the exchange and it's always the same so now if you look at at the image and i'm going to share with you so if you listen on the podcast it's going to be easy to visualize is that there is always information that comes from above towards us so like from the over soul network the information flow to us and then we we obviously share information with the other soul network because we are here literally to collect information. So person A is not collecting. And let's say person A is, a, is the woman. Um, person A is going to start saying, oh, like, you know, it's very unfulfilling to be with a man. Um, I really dislike it. Um, I really, actually, I'm not even fulfilled being a mother, to be honest, but I could never admit that. 
I really dislike it. I love my children, but every day I feel more and more miserable. I'm not fulfilled. I'm not like, there must be something more. I don't know what it is. I don't have any other purpose. Oh, and actually, I, it's not even that I don't like him any longer. It's like, I really pretty much hate his face. Like, literally, I can't believe I'm going to be stuck with him for the rest of my life. Really, relationship on earth sucks. And this person, A, this woman, is going to keep on repeating these belief systems, these emotions, these mental patterns over and over and over again, which means that the information that it sends to the Oversoul Network is that being in a relationship on earth sucks. It's very hard. It's very challenging. And even being a parent is kind of like, it's not fulfilling, you know, like she had to put her career on, on pause and she had to do all of these things. So basically she's going to start sending all of this information in the Oversoul Network. And then person B does the same, all information. Because they are in an unfulfilling relationship, the information that they send is that it's challenging, it's unfulfilling, um, it's difficult, you know? It's hard to be in a relationship. And therefore, when the next life comes, what happens very often, so I'm not going to go into deep dynamics here of soul projection on earth. If you want to know more, I offer programs where I go deep into that. So please follow me, uh, join my mailing list by receiving some of my gifts on my website, you know, follow me on all social like this video and so on. So you can know more about my, my programs. So let's say in the next life. Okay. The information that's going to come down is information about our soul. Second projection from the Oversoul Network. Okay, I have been human before. This is the information I have about being human. So now we have person A and person B that come with a certain level of data about being human. Yeah, but what are these data? Oh, relationships are hard. Relationship sucks. It's hard to be in a, in, with a woman. It's hard to be with a man. And it's hard to be a parent. Like maybe both of them felt unfulfilled. Like, so all of this is basically shared with them. So do you actually think that the chances for person A and person B to meet up again in this life and to have an uplifting relationship is possible and easy? Not necessarily. So what is going to happen is that the oversoul networks of person A and person B, they have a choice, a free choice. And I repeat this, this is a free choice. There is no one telling them you must. You are basically forced and controlled to do it, okay? As a sovereign oversoul network A and as a sovereign oversoul network B, they're going to connect together and say, do we want to repeat this to give these two a chance to basically maybe have better communication because last time we realized we did not communicate well and there were all of these wounds and traumas that were not addressed so maybe if we each you know do the work and then we come together maybe now we can shift the data and have an uplifting relationship because we know that on a quantum dynamic these two projections that we share are compatible it means that like the Oversoul Network, already know that there is compatibility. There is potential for having a happy, cheerful, joyful relationship for a long period of time. And so the Oversoul Network are going to come together. And here comes the free will of the projection of the a person A and person B of each Oversoul Network to come together. Are they going to keep on repeating the same dynamic that is already present in them? Remember, it's already present on a cellular level, this information that is shared from the Oversoul Network down within our physical body is present in our cells. We also have in our cells all the traumas and wounds, belief system and patterns from our ancestors. So it means that pretty much most of humanity right now, when entering relationships, we are fucked up to start with with a ton of data of a very low vibe, full of low programs, of control programs, of hardships, of challenges. It's, it's hard, you know, people continuously tell me it's hard to be in a relationship, it's hard to be in a relationship, and I've always been like, is it actually supposed to be like again here i am not in a relationship but it's actually relationship on earth are they meant to be really hard or is it because simply we keep on perpetuating what has been for eons challenging relationship 
And the answer is like, no, clearly, relationships are not meant to be hard. Life on earth is not meant to be shitty. We are not meant to be unhealthy in our physical body. We are not meant to suffer from depression, anxiety, stress. None of that is meant to happen. All of it happens because of the current dynamics of the metric system, but we are shifting very fast. Now is the time of accelerated evolution. So relationships are here in for a big change of dynamics as well. So when it comes to understanding twin flame relationship, soulmate relationship, and so on, please delete from your vocabulary contract. The idea that we have so contract prevents us from stepping fully as an individual in our sovereign uniqueness because it literally binds us to our soul because of supposed vows and pact and contract we would have signed when we don't even need this freaking physicality. What, what is that freedom? As if our over soul network would do that to us before projecting us? No way! The only thing that comes is the dance of over soul network coming together to, to exchange information so they can shift the information. They're going to shift the information by bringing back souls together that have had traumas together in past lives, in different realities, so the souls can finally come together to heal that. How do we heal that? How long are we meant to stay together? When do we know that the relationship is finished? I'm going to share with you on this subject now. So, person A and person B come together again. But here the difference is that they live now in 2022 and they have done a lot of work on themselves. And let's say that they have had maybe 10 lives now, you know, since they met. And they've also had lots of different partners. So they have been able to experience many different kinds of relationships with money, with mo without money, with kids, without kids, with same sex, same gender, like different identities and so on. So they have had, let's say, a good deal of experiences in terms of romantic relationship. Now when they come together, the compatibility of these two projections is very high. So maybe these souls met other partners in previous lives that were of certain compatibility, but maybe not as high as these two are in terms of information that each one has, in terms of the amount of keys that each one has to give to the other. So it means that person A and person B, basically they are super compatible because they have so many keys of evolution to give to each other that when that happens, each other's evolution and then their oversoul network evolution is going to be huge. So now they come together in 2022 and they've done a lot of work on themselves, you know, and it's, everything is different. So they fall in love, they enter in a relationship. But then, very quickly, because it happens now, the dynamics of relationship have changed already. You might have noticed that before we would have been in a relationship for a very long time before having to really work on it. Now, it starts straight away, pretty much first couple of dates, which is why it is more challenging as well to date people because keys are exchanged at, at, at an accelerated rate, basically. So now straight away there's this energetic pull, so this this magnet effect. So it means that there is already sexual attraction there, and that if they start communicating, they realize that they have many things in common. They look together in the same direction. They have the same standards in life. Here is Jesus Christ, Mary Magdalene, sharing about how do we know that there is uh, someone that is compatible to us? And um, they say that first there is very strong sexual attraction because it. It is literally uh, helping the transmutation of many frequencies to be able to have this very strong uh, sexual attraction. It doesn't mean that we need to have sex with all the people we are attracted to. It means that when we come into dynamic of divine union, that is one of the main and main ingredient to really look for is that sexual attraction is very, very deep. So sexual attraction is very deep, but not only that, there is a meeting of the mind. It means that literally these two souls can talk forever and feel at home. So there is also the dynamic of feeling safe. And sometimes they say, sometimes humans have to work around that because of their 
of the prickles, of the, um, the thorns, of their wounds. But down, deep down in the belly, in the pit of their stomach, they say, it can, if they were to sit in silence next to this person, they would feel really good. Maybe they need to adjust around certain terms used, around certain wounds, and open up their heart and say what it is that they want so they, they know that they can feel safe. But basically, this feeling safe comes as one of the most important ingredient as well in a divine union relationship. So we have very strong sexual pull, meeting of the mind, feeling safe, and they say also looking into the same direction, meaning that the codes that each person have are in a certain way complementary, so they can be slightly different, so they still like this uh, uniqueness that is there as two sovereign beings, in that they find each other interesting and surprising and cute and marvelous and like a wonder. But there is also things that they have in common, so they can create something together, so they can look into the same direction for their future. They're both into similar things that is going to act as a really like a um, it's more another binding ingredient, okay? So they say that if these four, are, four ingredients are there, then you can, you can really start entering the world of dating more this person because it's already there. And then they was going to come all the other things around, you know, are these people emotionally available? Is it the moment? Where are we going to live? And all the other things that come around that. But if you have these four things, you know that basically the ingredients to possibly enter beautiful union are already there. So now let's say that the two souls come together. What's going to happen is that there's going to be very quickly a lot of work needed to be done to heal and alchemize the information that had been exchanged between them in past lives. So it means that there could be, you know, some, some challenges around the, arising around opening the heart, around communication. So maybe person A and person B have become, each of them, very good at communicating with their friends or maybe their clients and students and so on. But somehow, when they come in the relationship, they kind of feel they are more guarded. They feel less safe to open up. It's because of their past. And it's simply through exactly that, through open-hearted communication, that two souls heal and exchange information because of the profound connection from heart to heart frequency into love into respect that they're going to be able to give each other a key also giving sound frequency words frequency and each if each person has the intention to continue exploring the relationship with the other person then the relationship can continue to grow and evolve for a certain period of time so it means that when two souls come together, they say, it is important to regularly check in honestly with the, the other person, with the beloved, and say, are you still looking in the same direction as me? Are, are we still walking, choosing each other to walk this path? Are we still enjoying this life? Because, yes, very often, because we are transitioning from 3D to 4D to 5D consciousness and the relationship, yes, divine union relationship will have hardships and challenges. Of course, I don't say they don't exist. I say that it's not necessarily needed. <laughs> like it's not true the same as having like bad health and continuous health problem, like living such short life, like dying at 80 and so on. Like that's all outdated, you know, 3D templates. No, 5D template will allow us to have relationships that are much less challenging. It would be much easier to heal and alchemize and to choose consciously to stay with the other person. But if the challenges um, of a lesser importance than the love and the desire to continue to journey together and that a lesser, that the compatibility, compatibility is very high, then it means that the relationship is supposed to continue. So here, Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ uh, share with us that very often, unfortunately, many people stay in relationships for the the wrong reason, because they're going to think that they are in a twin flame relationship or in divine union. So it means that they must stay together 
And they say there is um, nothing less uh, erroneous than this. Um, there is never, ever a contract signed before coming to earth that says you will must stay together according to this term of suffering for your whole life on earth. No. No one, God, source, Sophia consciousness, over soul network, that our divine frequency would never allow us. We would never, our soul would never do that to us. How horrible, you know. Oh, I'm going to come to earth and I'm going to force myself to be in this awful relationship for all my life, you know, so I can suffer like a bad, bad person. It's like, no. When we come to this place in the relationship, when we realize, like we keep on fighting continuously, like, I'm not in love with this person, or I think I love him, but I'm not quite sure. That's pretty much the sign that we're done with it. If the challenges are there con continuously, if we don't see ourselves growing old together, if we bored, bored like fuck, it's like, like, actually, why do we stay? We are allowing each other to enslave each other. And that is where and why we are together this is to free each other this is to find strength and courage in the in the self to say no more i reclaim my sovereign power now i reclaim my freedom now i reclaim my joy i reclaim my abundance i reclaim the whole that i am so i'm just gonna end this relationship and i'm gonna figure it out and i'm gonna go out there in the world and i'm gonna be fine so many people like the vast majority are in actually toxic relationship thinking that they are working on healing twin flame divine union relationship. So I know it's going to trigger a lot of people and that's okay because if you hear this and it's really triggering you to think like, oh, I think it's me, it's probably because it's you. Because often when we have this inside of ourselves, we know already. It's just that we don't have the courage to get out. It's just we don't have the courage to end it. Because we are sad, because we are scared, because we are frustrated, because we are afraid of what else. I, I'm no one without this person. How would I do financially? What will happen to our children, poor kids? So it's not that I'm judging. It's just I have a lot of compassion. I was in that relationship myself. You know, I'm, I'm divorced. I've been divorced for six years. So I went through all of that, all of these questions myself, walking this very challenging path of realizing it's pretty much over. We are done. And what to do now? I was very scared. I was sure that I would have nothing. I would have no one. I was sure that I would crash. I would be so unhappy and miserable. But actually, that was not the case. I felt so free. You know, I didn't feel amazing. I wouldn't be doing what I do now if I hadn't, you know, <laughs> be very honest and straightforward with myself first and my ex-husband. So it is an invitation to first be very clear with the state of our relationship, they say. It's like, are you happy? And if you're not sure, simply take a calendar and maybe put a yellow dot at the end of the day, at the, each date in your calendar. Just put like, yeah, today was sunshine. I, was, I felt fulfilled with my relationship. And put a red dot. Today was not sunshine. I did not feel fulfilled in my relationship. And feeling fulfilled in your relationship, if you don't know what it means, it means that you are not fulfilled, okay? You will know when you feel happy in your relationship. You know what it's like. So at the end of the day, if you're not sure, it means it's very, pretty much a red dot, they say, okay? So, and after like one month, two months, three months, observe. That's a very good reality check to have there. When you have that, really go within and ask yourself, okay, how can I talk to my partner? How can I bring this subject up and have a conversation first, find in your heart, do I want to try more with this person? Do I see myself aging with this person? When I think about leaving this person or staying with this person, how does my body react? Ask your body. You know, when you see yourself with this person, is your body, when you are sitting with this person, is your body closing up? Are you short of breath? Do you feel smaller? That's toxic. That's negative. You need to get out. Even if the person is literally a nice person, it's just like you don't laugh together. 
you don't do things together, you don't make love, it's basically like nothing. You just end up watching TV every evening, which was me and my ex-husband, you know? It was just nothing left. Yeah, sex was still okay, but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it was like, basically, if it's blah, it's also red dot. So do you have in yourself the desire to continue to try Maybe to go see a therapist, to have open heart communication, to check in with this person, what this person wants. Be courageous. You are much more powerful than you think you are. You are also much more creative than you think you are. There are so many ways for you to bring up the conversation. There are so many ways for you to find solution if you want to stay with this person. Maybe you have never had an open heart-to-heart -heart communication with this person. Maybe it's some of the, the keys that you need to exchange. Maybe you're going to walk to your to your husband. You're going to say, for the first time in five years, you're going to say, look, it's not working for me any longer. I just don't know what's happening, but I'm not even sure I'm in love with you. And maybe your ex-husband will actually go like, what the hell? Well, I love you so dearly. What happens? I don't want to lose you. And maybe that's kind of like the wake-up call that he needs to hear. And maybe he's going to say, oh, me too, actually. I'm really unhappy, but I don't want to lose you. What should we do? I'm really scared. You're going to be scared too. And all of a sudden, you're going to feel that you're connecting more. That's literally opening the communication. That's literally giving each other skis. Because it's like you, you look if the other person is also looking in the same direction, if the other person also wants to stay in and wants to work for it. Because being with someone who doesn't want to work for it, who doesn't want to continue with you, is it's an energetic click. You know, it's depleting your energy. It's sabotaging your self-growth. You're not a sovereign being in that situation. You know, you are literally with a leech. So cut that. But if both of you are like all of a sudden, oh my God, yes, like what happened? And uh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ are saying that there are many relationships like that. It's just like they need the revival of the alchemical fire, of the passion, of the sexual connection, of the heart-to-heart -heart communication, of reaffirming vows, of choosing each other now. It's not choosing each other because we were uh, in this past life, we were together, because we have a soul contract to be together, because we're supposed to die together. No. It's nothing like that. It's in this moment, I choose you again because I love you. Because at the end of the day, when I wake up and when I fall, fall asleep, I just want you to be by my side. Like, and yes, I'm unhappy. Yes, I'm fulfilled. But it's like in my heart that I know it. So that's great. That gives you so much passion, so much fire, so much to work with, to reignite an, a new level in your relationship, of coming even closer together. together. And now, uh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ are saying that there are also many people that are going to enter in this conversation with their husband or their partner, and they, you know, it's not going to be met, and the other person is going to be mean, and they're going to start projecting all sorts of lies and fears and anger and sadness at them. And so when we are the one that is awakening to this process and that's realizing I'm not fulfilled, this can no longer continue, then it means, well, I have to be ready to not be received here. And if I'm not received, I can hold myself. I can hold myself, I love myself, I'm, I'm, I'm my best friend, I'm learning to standing up for myself, I'm learning to love myself more through this. How can I hold myself more through this? So here, um, Jesus and Mary Magdalene are, are talking about some of the foundational um, frequency or embodiment to have when we are in a union with someone else is always working on the self. They say it's obvious, they, but they haven't shared it very clearly yet, so they want to repeat it. It's like keep on working on yourself. Find all of these places within yourself, within your physical body, within your emotional structure, your mental structure, your spiritual structure, where you can love more. You can love more who you are. So when you hold yourself fully, when you are fully present with everything that you are, it absolutely does not matter if someone else is there by your side or not. You are complete already. So you're not looking for anyone to complete you. 
Therefore, when you are in a relationship, it absolutely doesn't matter what the other person is going to say. You're going to be able to stand for yourself. You're going to be able to have much higher standards. You're going to be able to say, all of these behaviors, this is simply not allowed in my field. It's not allowed for my friends. It's not allowed. I would not treat myself like that ever. So, of course, I'm not going to allow anyone to treat myself like that. So, they say that one of the reasons that Sandrine is still single is because of this journey of self-love and sovereignty that I have been on for a very long time now, really reclaiming more of these places of myself, holding myself to a place that where I feel so complete now, that literally I don't need anyone to feel more complete. And when I enter a union, I have very high standards. So it means that I would not allow anyone to treat me to low standards any longer because I treat myself with very high standards. And I have my own set of standards that I'm looking for at meeting in another man. And when that man will come and we choose to be together for a certain period of time to give each other keys, then we experience. Then more of my inner child, past life ancestors, trauma, and so on will come up to the surface to be healed and alchemized through this relationship. And I welcome it as another pathway of evolution. But I do the work on myself constantly. And it means that if I'm with another person, pretty much if it lasts or if it doesn't, it's equal to me. I don't pay, I don't put any weight on the, like, I'm just going to enter a relationship if I know that he's the one. Because I feel in my heart that there is someone there that is going to complete me that on a level that the Two oversoul network coming together are there now to co-create. So here Jesus and Mary Magdalene say that it is the case for them, and that's absolutely the highest pure architecture of divine union, is when two souls come together, not to necessarily exchange information about healing past traumas any longer, because they have done that. So when Jesus and Mary Magdalene came together, they didn't have to exchange information about that. They came together to activate alchemy within each other to be able to reach mastery so that's very advanced souls coming together that's the purest highest template of the divine union so it means that in the quantum two of our soul network are coming together and it has been decided before but it is not a contract in a way that it is an invitation they're going to bring their project to run together they're going to say let's see how these two now you know connect Chances are that sexual attraction is going to be up the roof and all the things. And when these souls come together, it means that they birth new realities together because they each have reached a very already advanced level of mastery. So they come together and they can birth very quickly new realities. So when Mary Magdalene and Jesus came together, first they became very good friends and they started working together. They say that Jesus helped Mary Magdalene to stand in public at a time where women were basically beaten up and raped and had zero voice. But yet Mary Magdalene was sitting next to Jesus as an equal. It was unheard of. It, was, it had never been seen any, any, anywhere before. But there she was, master herself, transmuting huge amount of frequencies, you know, healing and alchemizing and public speaking beside Jesus as an equal. So he gave her massive, massive keys of opening up divine feminine Christ consciousness on earth. If he hadn't been there, she wouldn't have been able to be in public to such a level. Mary Magdalene gave, gave him so much love and affection that, you know, the embrace of the woman can give that he was able to go through his intense journey that he knew was going to happen until the end with someone by his side that was supporting him on all levels. And not only that, she was able to activate such high level of ecstasy through the love making that Jesus was able to activate his car body to the level of mastery that allowed him to become immortal. So Mary Magdalene, she helped him by giving him pretty awesome keys as well in terms of alchemy of sexual ecstatic bliss states. So when we talk about divine union, it is always free sovereign choice of coming together 
for a certain period of time to exchange information. So now they say that most of us <clears throat> listening to this podcast, there will be different kind of percentage around healing traumas and activate and birthing new realities. Because they say that a lot of people that listen to this podcast and that they watch me on my YouTube channel and follow me are already on this path of embodying consciously their mastery through you know many lifetimes and so on. So it means that they are already birthing also many more creation because they realize, they remember that they are powerful creators. So they say that there's always this blend of working through density and being able to co-create together. So here they say that it's interwoven, okay? But co-creating together, it doesn't mean that, you know, we create a business and we do all of these things together. It means that maybe the co-creation for a, a, a couple will be co-creation of little humans, you know, having children together. And that's going to be very fulfilling for both of them. Fatherhood and motherhood is going to give them so much happiness and fulfillment that it's going to literally be one of the highlights on, on earth. For others, it's going to be activating timelines of travels because they are very good travel companions. They, they both want to visit similar countries at the same time and it's exciting. So it's opening up so many doors. It's like literally creating adventure, creating fun and joy. For other people, it could be exploring new pleasures in life. So it could be that finally coming together, ooh, they can experience more of their sexual fantasy. They can experience more beautiful, delicious cuddles and massage and love making and all, sens all this sensuality that they had never had with anyone else. But like coming together, they have that. And not only that, but they can also enjoy the same food. They love similar food and wine. They are very much into pleasures and sensations and all of these experiments with beautiful pleasures of life. And then for some other people, it will be about bringing the vortex together to create to create a foundation, to create a business, to create timelines of service for others. So they complement each other there. They encourage each other. They uplift each other into their service, each individually as sovereign being, but also together. And they're going to continue doing that for as long as it's, it's exciting. So they say that eventually, when we are fully anchored into 5D frequency, Relationships will be very different. There will be um, unions that are formed from a very young age already. And these two souls pretty much are together for all their life, pretty much effortlessly. It's like literally like kids would come together, uh, two kids, and they would be inseparable. And they would just continue like that. And there would be no... Um, no problems or no density around, oh, but we should explore with someone else, blah, blah, blah. Aren't we supposed to try other people on and so on? It would be just like a faultless. And it would be other people that just come together for 10 years, 15 years, five years, one year. And then they consciously realize, oh, look, I think it's come to completion now, hasn't it? Yes, darling. I love you so dearly. I literally love you. I adore you. But I feel that. In terms of romantic partnership, this has come to completion and it will simply be the case. And the relationship will be like that. Some people might choose to take some kind of vows to stay together, but it will be very different. It won't be like a contract of we must stay together, you know, like until death parts us through hell together and pain and misery. No, it will be, we take a vow to love each other and to renew our vows, maybe, you know, things like that. So they say that unions are going to be very different because people are now working on understanding awakening process happening through their own consciousness. So we are moving away from templates of contrast of evolution through suffering to evolution by following our heart desire. So it means that in romantic relationship, if we have a heart desire to spend time with another person, one day, two days, three days, one lifetime, two lifetimes, then this heart desire simply keeps us there because our heart desire meets. And I know like at times our heart desire 
is to be with another person and this desire is not met and it creates a lot of pain and suffering and here what a beautiful ascended masters jesus christ and mary magdalene wants to share is that they have a lot of compassion and they can really feel that that when we are in a relationship where love isn't met it is really heartbreaking literally and it is their coming for the purpose of loving the self more and it means that there is someone else that is going to reciprocate this love then lowering of frequency uh, becoming very small so the other person might love us like trying to change our personality so the other person might love us all of that is actually not the way to go the way to go is to say you know what this person is not accepting me this person doesn't really like me doesn't want to to be with me any longer and it hurts it hurts so bad it sucks i hate it i don't want it but you know what like i've got my own back i'm no i'm an amazing person i'm no i i'm full of love enjoy myself i'm worth loving i'm fantastic and if it's not gonna be her if it's not gonna be him then i'm gonna be okay and maybe it's gonna hurt for a while but I'm going to be okay, you know, I'm going to make it. I'm going to ask for assistance, for friends, for my help in the physical, my friends, my family, and in the non-physical, my soul family. And I'm going to go through this with myself. I'm going to parent myself. And here it's important to do a lot of inner child work. Parent yourself, be there for yourself, walking through this journey of having your heart broken, and please don't close yourself to the potential of loving again because love is all there is. So how could we possibly prevent ourselves to loving again? That's literally enslaving us to lifetimes of suffering, of, of feeling deprived of the first primate force of the universe. So be very careful what we say. It's like in, in time, in time, when I feel ready. And right now, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but I'm suddenly not closing doors. And that's all that's needed. We just keep this open and we are present for the self. And we take time to grieve, we take time to heal, we take time to process. So I'm just tuning in now to see if anything else needs to be shared. Yes, so they say that the most important thing they would like us to remember when it comes to celebrating the union of two souls is that the you know, union of two souls comes through joyful frequency. And the joyful frequency is going to act like a cocoon of healing. So it means that within this cocoon of joy, there will be hardships, there will be challenges. But the joy that having this the, the having the other person in our field provides is so big that it's going to cushion everything else so it means that through all the challenges we're going to face into basically stabilizing the relationship into a new level of closeness of open connection and of happiness and so on all of that is going to work through having this deep in our knowing, in our heart, that we are happier in so many ways because the other person is there. It's like our level of joy is just like amplified. So of course we're already happy and joyful by ourselves, but it's like, you know what I mean here. It's like when we are with this person, it's just yet another level. So they say, remember that this beautiful a cocoon of joy is there to to also show you that more keys need to be exchanged. And they say, ask yourself every now and then, ask your heart, heart, soul, what are the keys that are here to be exchanged with this person that I'm experiencing with right now? What, how can I show up more for myself? How can I show up more for him or her? How can I show up more for the relationship? Oh yes, they say, let's finish with this actually. When we come together with another soul, we birth the relationship. So it means like literally like Isis and Osiris, they birth the Horus, the sun. <clears throat> so there is the relationship that is being created because becomes a frequency. So it's important to nourish the self, nourish the other person through acts of service and touch and quality time and all of this love language that we can give each other. But then it's important to also nurture the relationship in itself. 
to think what does this relationship need right now to feel uplifted so you can tune into yourself you can ask your partner what do you need from me what do you want is there anything that would make you happy and see if it's in you to to give that to provide that and the same thing ah, ask you know like what i would really love right now what i really need right now is for please for you to bring me a cup of tea and give me a massage because i've had a very long day can you give this to me and then can we create some time to refine a relationship to uplift a relationship what should we do for our relationship darling should we take our relationship on a weekend away? Should we take our relationship or maybe like tonight we don't watch TV and we go at six o'clock in the bedroom and we have like a picnic on the floor and then we make love all night long like we've never done before or like not in a long time. What does this relationship need right now? So always remember the divine number of the Trinity is two souls coming together, birthing a relationship. So look after yourself, look after your partner, and look after the relationship, and you will be blossoming in this beautiful cocoon of joy, continuously giving keys of evolution to each other until you feel complete. Maybe that will be before the end in this lifetime. Maybe it will be until the end. For that, only life will tell. You will know pretty much on your deathbed. Yes, before that, we never shall, because it's part of the poem. We might have an intuition, but let's not allow this intuition to become a, a jail of enslavement of we must stay, mm? because there are many other dynamics we're not aware of. Mm? Things sh shift very quickly. I hope you enjoyed this transmission. It was a little bit longer than my usual transmission because there is so much to say. And again here, I'm talking from the architecture of it. I haven't embodied a beautiful divine union relationship yet, but I do trust that it is out there and that one day I will be playing with it. And maybe then, after a little while, I can share with you. Right now, I'm more or less, let's be honest, embracing the dating game, which is more or less happening <laughs> very slowly. And I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for your beautiful heart, for your readiness to learn, to open your consciousness, for your ability to be courageous in putting yourself, your relationship into question, because that requires courage. So I have a lot of admiration for each and every one of you, my listeners, also for each and one of my students. If you are interested in going deeper with me, I have many, many programs, short ones, short transmission to signature courses on my website, sendrix.com. It is called the Coded Library and you can have programs like the mini ritual starting as little as $25 to travels in the quantums when you can go and meet the races like the Pelidians, the Andromedans, and so on. You can find so many extremely valuable transmissions there. So I would love to invite you to check that out. Thank you for following me. Thank you for commenting. I love receiving this from you. I say bye and I will see you next time. If you enjoy this, you will love Fracta Alchemy 5D Quantum University. Please visit my website sendrains.com for more information.